I thought I will never be able to make it, but uh, it is a success. And it's a small success. And it's a testing success, still in testing. Uh, what I did here, I have this uh, 4030, yes. So as you can see there, 4030 uh, chip. So I, I extended the driver and I'm building everything only with this 4030 chips. And uh, it is running in parallel with this one as well. This one is my uh, uh, reference, uh, how it should work. And this one, finally, I, I linked all the wires to in parallel pretty much with uh, with this uh, outputs from, from this chip uh, that is going to, to the other, uh, to that little driver there. And uh, yeah, it's working, it's fucking working. And uh, <laughs> holy fucking shit, it was hard, hard as fuck. I, um, it will be even harder now because uh, uh, this module that I'm having here was on the side and I could uh, actually see the, I could I could check the wiring. Uh, when I uh, took out the wiring here, I could check it with, uh, with the, the other side there. But this uh, LCD is so strongly fit into this uh, uh, pins holders here. I cannot easily uh, take it out from this pin holders. It is almost cemented inside. Uh, if I'm trying to take it out, I am seriously afraid I will break the glass. That's how cemented it, it got into the, the pin holders. It, they are like little little clamps, but they, they, they squeeze so hard, it's almost like it's cemented. And I, I'm not having access to the other chips that I'm having uh, underneath to actually make uh, the comparison and to test the wiring. I don't know how I will manage to do that. So for now, what I'm having here is uh, working perfectly. And uh, also in parallel with that one as well, in the same time, exactly in the same time, and with the same digits, no errors whatsoever, uh, no bullshit errors. Um, I, I even uh, took out the clock from the 7414. I made two clocks uh, with it. Uh, this clock here that is feeding the LCD uh, driver, is running the LCD driver, this one clock, and a secondary clock with the same chip that is running at a very low frequency, uh, this numbering that I'm having, uh, displaying here. Uh, so I, I'm having this module with a button when I'm clicking the button, so I took it out so, and I put this um, uh, automatic clock uh, that you are seeing here, and it's clocking automatically right now by itself. And uh, <clears throat> so far so good, I'm very, very extremely happy that it's working without any kind of problems, without <coughs> without any kind of errors. Uh, I did encounter a slight very slight error when I test when I when I first put this uh, chip here, uh, this pin uh, here was uh, out from the A segment and the A segment was not uh, litting at all. But then I, I, I uh, track it down until I figure it out and uh, now it's working as it should be. Uh, also, I checked every wire, of course, uh, every connection from here to there, uh, a lot of shit. Uh, but in the end, it was a uh, uh, springed out like you know, uh, not making absolutely any contact. It was springed up, and when I was looking, it was looking like it was uh, fine. But when I press it, I, I could see the springness uh, that was moving when I was pressing it. And that's, that's that's that was it. So this is a small, very very small uh, progress uh, so far with the LCD driver, the fucking LCD driver, that uh, literally it uh, a ton of my time. Uh, and it was a very, very hard, very hard lesson not to trust every chip out there. Trust only those that you are making tests with, pretty much. So this is it for this part. Uh, like I said before, and I will repeat it now, what I'm building here, all these inputs that I'm having here are parallel inputs. Pretty much I'm driving one by one and not serially. So uh, this is the difference of, of why I'm building all the trouble that I'm, I'm building, all the trouble that... Uh, for all the trouble for building all this driver, uh, this very complicated driver, uh, is that I'm having parallel inputs for each digit and I can command each segment for each digit by itself from whatever, literally whatever um, logic chip that I have. Uh, doesn't matter if it's a logic chip or a microcontroller or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so that's that's uh, the that's why the, the trouble that I'm uh, put, uh, the work that I'm putting for this driver because it's very easy to drive it. It's very hard to build it, but it's very easy to drive it. It's very uh, intuitive to drive it in parallel, uh, comparative with serial. So this is it. Thank you very much. See you later. All right. I managed to do a little bit of work after the testing. Uh, what I did, I mounted this chip and this chip. I made this common um, signal on both of them, on all its four inputs for this one and for this one as well. Same, like this. Okay. Then I connected the common signal here to this common <laughs> signal branch, and then here as well to this one as well. And then I uh, connected the positive rails for this chip and this chip, and here is the, the another wire that is going, I know it's not very visible, but it's going there to that pin, and the negative wire that is coming from somewhere there, from, from this chip I took it. So pretty much what I did here, I connected the, the, the common uh, signal wire uh, for, this, for all the inputs, for all these chips, for all the gates, and uh, I've, and the power, ra uh, power rails for these chips. And uh, the next is to uh, add uh, outputs from these two chips to their respective pins there, and then inputs to this uh, input board, cardboard that I'm having here. 
and um, the driver will be finished hopefully also working as well it, it took me quite some time to, to do what you're seeing here only um, but uh, yeah it's, uh, it's looking fine here is how it's looking on the back uh, this is not a wire <laughs> this is a cardboard and uh, these are the wires here as you can see that are going I actually uh, these wires were going through those holes originally and I took them out from those holes and I dragged them well I, I put more little bits of wires in continuation and I continued them until I, I got them out with, with the wires that I already had them already cut uh, I didn't have to cut them that's why it's looking a little bit uh, you know this uh, shorter this is longer uh, a little bit not uh, at the same uh, level uh, I used uh, already used wires and I also uh, <clears throat> I put a scotch um, protection adhesive bands uh, to to cover those uh, combination uh, the soldering you know where I, I, I soldered the two pieces together and uh, that's pretty much that's it I patched everything as best as I could and uh, next I will have to figure out these four wires where they are coming from where they are linked and uh, for each uh, those are inputs and I have to figure out uh, what output they are designated to uh, lucky me right now I have the power supplies uh, for everything uh, so that's a very good thing and also the, the, the common signal supply uh, linked up already and uh, it will be easier probably I hope it will be easier to find out what those wires uh, these wires uh, are designated to and uh, uh, I know for sure uh, I, I mean, I, I linked also the, all the outputs here, uh, so all these outputs are, are linked already to the pins of these uh, LCDs, LCD. and I, uh, all, all these inputs that I'm having here are already uh, having a corresponding output uh, already linked, so I can lit up a segment pretty much from those, uh, from one of one wire from here, from this one input from here, I can lit up its corresponding output and figure out uh, which uh, segment number it is, pretty much, blindly. It is a little bit of a blind work, uh, unfortunately. Uh, here, like I said, uh, in the margin, it was very easy to, to poke around and to, to find out uh, which wire was the, for the inputs and, and figure out its outputs, but uh, because I could see the chip here. Uh, probably the same goes for this side, for this chip as well, but there are uh, other two guys here, well, two and a half <laughs> inside, uh, and that I am, I am blinded from uh, those connections. Uh, pretty much this is it uh, for this part, and see you next time. So, I managed to link up the four inputs that were on that side for this uh, digit that I'm having there. So only four wires uh, that are coming from the chip beneath it. And uh, I actually look back in my 3D uh, con configuration sketch that I made, and I, I looked there, and I I, I know uh, the designation pins for these wires for the chip inside uh, beneath this LCD. So this two are AB, and this other two outputs are FG, uh, and they are already connected there. And now when I'm switching, I'm getting half of a digit. Let me close this probably, or bring the light there. Yeah, probably to catch them both. So pay attention on this second digit here because this is the one that I'm testing right now. And when I'm pressing here, it's making half of a digit. Uh, as you can see, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, see, eight, nine, zero, and one. You see? And it is running as expected, which is absolutely phenomenal. I will have to drag uh, the last three, these three chips, they will leave uh, one single gate, and I will take one gate from each chip and I will link, link the remaining pins to form the, the final digit. Uh, uh, but I wanted to show you the to show the progress so far. This is how I linked on the other side. Uh, it's I didn't put uh, scotch. I didn't secure those wires yet, but uh, they will be secure glued to the cardboard and uh, pretty much uh, <laughs> This is the, the progress so far. All right. All right. I like it. Evrika, Evrika. I have uh, another successful test here. Uh, I'm running it in parallel with that as you can see. I wired temporarily here all the seven segments to that counter that I'm having there and uh, when I'm cycling uh, I'm not sure if I can show everything if it's Actually, let me do it like that. Probably it's, it's good. So it's this digit that I have here and that one. So on this two, you have to look. And two, three. Uh, let me actually reset one, zero, one. So it is one as well. Two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine, and zero. And it's perfect. Uh, here is perfect because this is the most important part. So I combined this chip and this chip and they all make the seven segments plus another gate from this chip that it will go there. I didn't link it yet, but that's the plan. So I, I have this this digit here and this the, uh, that digit uh, there. So these two on the margins are tested and working perfectly. And uh, yeah, it's good. Uh, it uh, took me like uh, four days of doing absolutely nothing until I started to, to make this other um, links that you're seeing here and to test this uh, digit that you're seeing right now uh, it took me like three or four days of doing absolutely nothing i was depressed as fuck uh, that's what it's uh, partly uh, i believe one of the main problem was the failure that i had with the other small uh, xor gate that i 
or originally de designed it. So uh, in a nutshell, um, I was thinking on this particular detail when you don't test the chip that you are working with or the component that you are working with, uh, you, you believe that it will work. You design, it is exactly what I did. I designed everything with that uh, untested component, that XOR, small SMD XOR gate. Uh, let me actually give you the, the real name of it. Uh, 7486. Uh, so uh, pretty much what I did this uh, I made a even a a, a small uh, envelope there. I can show you. Uh, these are all the used. You see all my uh, the all the used gates. And uh, I didn't test this originally like I tested here uh, with this 4030 XOR gates, uh, four gates per chip. So these were absolutely untested and not testing them, trusting they will absolutely work because they are XOR gates. That was the idea that I had in mind. Uh, yeah, it's it's, it's a XOR gate. It should work, right? Wrong. <laughs> uh, I didn't test it. I, I truly believe it will work without testing. I, I made all the design with them, with this little uh, guy's 7486. I made the design. I spent a ton of time. I spent... Uh, I, I lost a lot of time uh, on designing. It took me a couple of days to design the thing in 3D. And then I come back here and I, I designed everything based on those chips. I was so sure it would work. And I, I, link, I, I glued them. I, I mounted them. I, I, I wired them. It was a tremendous, tremendous uh, work. It wasn't... It's not easy. It's, it, trust me. It, it is not easy. And um, that... All this experience, all this trust that I had in my mind, in my in my logic, that it will work, uh, finally uh, erupted into a depression. Uh, that it uh, cost me four days of doing absolutely nothing. I just didn't want to see anything. Uh, I did test this side and it worked. <coughs> but after realizing <coughs> what was the, the real problem, I just fall into a, into a depression just like that just just because uh instead of being happy of finding the solution and continuing with the, the solution that i that i find i got i, I dive into depression and it took me like four, four days of doing absolutely nothing i just play some games watch movies all day long pretty much and today very hardly today i started to to wire up the rest of the wires that i had and this particular module that i'm having here and tested it like you are seeing right now so uh this is a lesson uh don't build anything in your life <laughs> If you don't test it first, it's a general rule, not only for electronics, for everything, but especially for electronics. Test the shit out of your components because it will not, it, you will have surprises. And the biggest surprise, bad surprise that I had was the depression. Uh, also the lost time, the lost design, uh, lost time for designing, lost time for building, because I did build it uh, manually. And also the lost time from depression after, after all of this. And holy fucking shit. Uh, I hate when it's happening like this. And uh, it's a common mistake that I usually make it. Sometimes I'm making it. I, I learn my lesson to test everything. But sometimes I I skip my own rules. Uh, and when I skip my own rules, reality is having its way <laughs> of slapping my face with sh shit like like the ones that uh, that I had with with a different model or brand or whatever. Unbelievable, unbelievable. This this was the lesson that I wanted to, to show and to expose here and the tests that I did. And it, it is working absolutely perfectly as it should be. Uh, no problem, no problem. All right, this is it. All right, another success. Uh, this was a critical, actually. Uh, I have one chip there to drive four segments. And for the rest of the three segments, the ADC uh, segments for this uh, digit, uh, I drag the, the gates from these three chips. So I combine these three chips to create the last three segments for this particular digit. And I tested it, and it is working nominally. Make abstraction of these errors that I'm getting there, because uh, it's because uh, the inputs are floating, and when they are floating, they are uh, creating this kind of errors. If I'm touching uh, the inputs, uh, the inputs should be either high or low, pretty much, and uh, uh, or low, all to be low to not display anything. So uh, it, it is uh, some static electricity probably on the wires, and that's why we are seeing those uh, errors there. Those these errors are not a problem, absolutely not a problem. So make abstraction of them. I, I actually managed to get rid of them, but uh, they reappeared when I'm switching from here. Uh, so uh, it is working in parallel with with that one as well, commanded by this logic chip that I'm having there. So zero, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero again. <coughs> I was uh, extremely uh, afraid that this combination that I made from multiple chips will interfere somehow and not let the the digit to, to display correctly. Uh, this was another uh, experiment uh, and another. Uh, um, you know, I took a chance, a leap of faith, <laughs> that it will work, and it is working. And this this is a big relief for me that this this particular digit combined from um different chips pretty much is still working absolutely perfectly as it should be so uh yeah i kind of i kind of uh, risk it uh, with this project i risk it because i didn't test everything i kind of uh build it and expect to work i i should have i made two big mistakes here very very big mistakes not testing that those little chips and not testing if from different gates i can make a single uh a digit to perform <coughs> i know i did a lot of tests and uh, everything else 
it is suggesting me that it it kind of suggested me that it should have worked because I already did use uh, these two chips to, to create a single digit. So uh, theoretically, it should have worked as, as it is right now. It is working, not theoretically. It's, it's actually practically. I did kind of test uh, multiple gates from multiple chips to create a one digit, you know, kind of, kind of, uh, in a sense, uh, here on the breadboard. That's why I had the intuition that it will work a little bit more complicated, <laughs> one step uh, more complicated than my test that I did there. But I should have make the test exactly as I'm having it here on the broad breadboard to, to be perfectly sure it is working and not uh, leave to chance or to surprises. Uh, it could have very well not working. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, this I made mistakes, very, very costly mistakes in a in, uh, uh, in matter of time and, uh, uh, and, uh, and depression <laughs> and, and, and psychology. You know, psychologically, I wasn't well at all. I was very, very depressed when it when it didn't work, as, as I imagined. When you have expectation, great ex expectations, uh, that's when, and th those expectations are not realized as you expect them, uh, as you dream of them, uh, then you fall into depression. That's the, the rule, the only rule. And it's it's uh, uh, applying to everything in life, not only electronics, but especially in electronics. All right, this is it for this test. Uh, this test well, is, it was a very important test and it, it is a successful test. Yay, yay for me. And the last uh, digit that I'm having there, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. And everything is working perfectly for this digit as well. So right now at this point, I tested every digit, everything, and it's working as it should be. No problem anymore. The driver is, is finished, finally. Finally, the driver is finished. And next I will have to make the logic and uh, <laughs> everything will, is go, it will go more smoothly from now on. I hope, I hope I will not have more problems. <laughs> I really hope because this was top of the iceberg. Top, uh, it, it was too much, it was too much problems. I didn't expect it. All right, that's it. Uh, Everything is tested, all the digits are working perfectly. Excellent, excellent. Next phase is to build the next board, cardboard module here with the logic and see you later. All right, so this is the situation until here. Uh, <coughs> what I did, um, this is the logic board. And what I did so far, <laughs> Dr. HDMI, uh, this is the cardboard from that adapter. Uh, so make an ex exception uh, from the writing that is here. And I'm only showing the backside, how I, I made the holes and I, I put some wires, very thin wires actually. I used uh, the thinnest that I have, 0 012 uh, millimeter. Usually I'm using, <coughs> uh, usually usually I'm using 0 025 for almost all my projects. Uh, rarely I'm using 0 017. But now I even used 0 012, which you are seeing here. This guy is here, they are extremely thin. And um, uh, this is a very thick wire. Don't ask me why I use it, uh, just because I have it. And um, I kind of follow the, the 3D version uh, of the. <coughs> that I built and I showed already. Uh, as you can see already here, you can actually see on the chip the name of it. Yeah, 4110, you see? CD4110. And uh, it is what I'm saying. <laughs> it, it is exactly as I'm planning. And uh, I put the resistors there, there, and here. Uh, these three resistors, which are... Uh, let me show you this guy, how I, I how I soldered them, you see? <laughs> it's, uh, it's quite funky. And uh, this one is uh, a little bit under there. Yeah. Uh, not sure how well. Yeah, you see, that's the leg, the second leg to the ground there. And this is the first one on here. And uh, it's a pull down resistor, uh, this one. Uh, this one as well, all of them are pulled down. <laughs> so, yeah. And next, after this stage, uh, why I'm filming actually right now is because the next um, step is to uh, glue this cardboard uh, to this cardboard and make it uh, final, like a hole, like that. You see, and put a, a very good amount of uh, adhesive and glue it like that and then um, I'll have to drag uh, the power wires uh, to this uh, rail, uh, this uh, power, uh, this positive rail and this negative rail which is underneath here. Uh, this is the power rail, positive and negative and probably I'll have to put a, <coughs> a protection cardboard <coughs> uh, just, just to protect those very thin wires and then to add the logic that is coming from uh, that pin and that pin there. Let me actually point it from this pin here. I believe it, it is this guy here and this guy here, the second. So not the first, this, this is the second. So from this point and from that point, I will have to drag the wires, uh, the commanding wires, probably the count up and count down wires, I believe. Uh, I, I will have to check with the diagram. And also this wire here that will go somewhere on the bottom, I believe, for the reset uh, button there. Uh, like I said, the power rails, positive and negative, I will have to link them somehow. Uh, on the exterior here, on the surface, or beneath everything. Uh, I will have to, to figure it out. And then the most important thing is to link all these uh, wires to each uh, output of this chip uh, with its corresponding uh, you know, segment. Uh, so this A to G segment will be linked to this chip uh, specifically, that segment to this, and so on, you know, that to this. Uh, I know I have some irregular wires, length, length wires here, and I also have this very large positive pads here. In the way, some of the wires will have to go here, and I will have to think about, I'm very undecided at this point if I will 
<coughs> link them on the surface here or underneath everything. I'm very, very undersized at this point. I have no idea how to do it. Probably uh, some of them I will have to link them underneath and some of them link leave them on the surface. Probably. I have no idea. Uh, probably it will be a combination of the, the two ways. I really wish to be only one way, uh, either underneath or either on the surface here. We will see. Uh, this will get a bit more complicated because I will have to add the diodes that are standing up and all together link with a single wire. It will be a quite complex uh, circuit here uh, for all these four uh, chips. If I will uh, decide to add that beeper uh, module in the continuation here. But for the logic of everything, it is uh, almost finished, almost finished for the, the entire thing to, to work, to actually uh, see some uh, some functional uh, working of it, you know, uh, making abstraction of that uh, beeper circuit. Probably I will make it, probably I will not make it. <laughs> I, I'm very undecided with that one as well. I want to add another module, so I will use this 7414 to make a very specific one second uh, timing. Uh, I will not be very, very, very exact one second, but I will be very, very close to uh, the exactness of one second. I hope. Uh, I will have to do it experimentally until I will get the, the desired uh, results. Uh, so I will have to link another gate from somewhere and to make some room somewhere and to make the, the, the wires to that specific and also a switch probably to that specific one second or variable, which is right now. Right now it's variable with this potentiometer here. And that is the displaying uh, LED that is showing uh, the, the pulsing. And <coughs> But I will have to add something that will switch between this variable uh, pulsing and that specific one second, perfect one second, because it is having a very interesting uh, uh, mm, application, not application, uh, function. It's, it's a very interesting function to have on this project. So I really hope I, I don't have, I will, I will not have to add another cardboard on the top there to, to enlarge it. But if it will be the case, well, uh, so be it. <laughs> but this is the update uh, so far. That's it for this part. Very small update. I glued the cardboard. So now at this point it is glued there. And... Uh, <clears throat> And also I've added uh, this red positive power line and this blue wire, which represents the negative power line. And all this marking that you are seeing here with blue, this line with blue represents the fact that there is a wire from this point to that point, then another wire from this point to that point and so on. From this point to that point, another wire and a fourth wire from uh, this wire that you are seeing here actually uh, is connected to that pad. And the same goes here and I can show you on the other side. It is exactly as I'm showing you. And there are two wires. Let me actually zoom in. Yeah, that's better. So you see. These are the two wires, one that is coming from uh, from this side, from here, is one wire there, and another wire that is linking to this pad, to this pad, and the Newton is bending like that. Pretty much uh, that's uh, the idea. So all these are connected between them, doesn't matter where I put the wire. In this case, I, I, I kind of put it uh, very ugly uh, in the middle <laughs> of the circuit board. Uh, I hope I will not have problems when I will have to link these pins, especially on this side, but there are only three of them. Hmm. And also here, probably, not to, to touch with the hot iron. This uh, easy to melt plastic. Uh, if uh, yeah, I can I can take it out from here, solder everything that I need, and then re, re solder it back again. Uh, probably this is half of the work done by by gluing it and by adding the power lines is half done. Next is all these beautiful wires and also this uh, signal wire uh, and also from these two pins another two wires that uh, will go to that board there. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Wish me luck. So <clears throat> I decided I made this little sketch here how the wiring should go to which pin, and I decided uh, I actually had to think about it quite. Uh, quite a while, and I decided after a little bit of thinking that uh, because I have this crossed, everything is crossed. So you, you see from B is going here to the 15, and from C is crossing the B, you see, to 14, and D is crossing these two wires as well, and going to 13, and E is crossing all these three wires to A, and to this 12, and G and F is crossing everything else, only A uh, point is direct uh, to the pin, uh, not crossing anything else. So because I have such a large amount of crossing, a wire crossing, I will. I decided to make it underneath because here on the top it will look like shit. And uh, yeah, I already put uh, holes. I only I didn't put a hole for the A because A is direct there. It's very easy to link A with the first pin that I'm having there. And the rest will cross whatever how they are crossing underneath there and uh, link to their respective pins. I didn't uh, put the holes for the pins of the chip yet. And uh, it, it is it is a problem that right here I have the positive line underneath everything. I will most probably I will have to from precaution. So it's here. This is the positive line. Uh, most probably I will have to put a cardboard to protect also th those pads because it will be a lot of crossing here and uh, crisscrossing, you know, cross-crossing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, probably it will be smart to add a protection over this positive line just to be sure. And uh, look how it's looking on the on the back already is, yeah, it's crazy. It's a crazy project, but uh, it's it's intuitive to build it. It's it's quite easy to build it uh, from the logic perspective point of view. I, I, I mean, it's it's quite uh, user-friendly to build it, you know. Even my father could, could make this circuit. But uh, the biggest problem is the wiring, <laughs> layouting the components, and the size is quite big. I don't like such a big size, but and it will be even bigger because I will have to add other modules. But so far, so good. I mean, um, it's looking weird, <laughs> but it will work. It will work. I'll have to add 
I thought already. And uh, most probably I will have to, I will have to add a wood uh, plaque uh, sheet underneath and all this very fragile uh, board, cardboards, uh, with everything will be uh, probably glued or, or screwed on that piece of uh, wood and very thin, like, uh, I don't know, like uh, five millimeters uh, thick. That will strengthen enormously uh, the entire thing. And on the top here, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I will add. Maybe uh, for sure I will add a cardboard, but I'm thinking to add also some uh, piece of uh, uh, sheet, metal sheet. I will have to cut it to shape and to, to protect from uh, from falling, most of most of all. But uh, that's a little bit too far ahead, uh, thinking. Uh, right now I'm, I'm showing you my resolve and my decision that I made uh, by punching those holes and deciding to, to, to put everything underneath and, uh, criss -cross and crossing everything underneath because it's a, it's a madness of wiring there. And uh, it will be the same for all these four chips. This is it for now. See you later. So, uh, this is how I plan uh, to add the protection. I've, I already cut this piece of cardboard and I've mounted there, you see? On top of this positive line, which is connected already on all those pads, uh, terminals. And when it will cover, it will... You will say that is that was nothing there. <laughs> it's quite on the limit, very limit. <coughs> but it's doing the, the protection that I needed, you know, uh, when I will cross the wires. So that's uh, before gluing it, just to show you how how I'm, I'm planning to make it. So I was gluing this board, this uh, module, as you can see, it's glued on the back there. I managed to put all these wires to link them to this chip here. Uh, let me show you. These are all the wires that are linked to the respective pins of the chip. And I put a lot, a lot of paper, I glue it, uh, not to make uh, shorts, short circuits be between those uh, naked uh, soldering, uh, because they are intersecting a lot. Uh, not quite, not, not that many, but there are some intersections there. And I, I reached this, this stage where where I need to link this negative wire and most importantly, this three volts positive wire. And uh, I don't have, uh, I only have a very long line and uh, I, I didn't uh, put a short wire from, from this point to there. So I uh, I risk it and I, I managed to take out the, the LCD display. Very, very, very risky at this point. I hope I didn't break anything. It looks like uh, everything was okay when I took it out. Let's hope it will be fine in the end. So now I, I have access to that positive pin there that they are all linked together. And I, I can use a shorter, probably, a shorter wire going there somewhere. So uh, that's uh, what I'm, I'm trying to show you right now. This is uh, the, the device without the LCD. This is only the driver for the LCD. Uh, that is some control board and this is the logic. Oh, <laughs> oh, it's quite big, it's quite big, but uh, it's interesting, it's interesting. All right, all right. I wasn't sure if this will work, <laughs> but right now, at this moment, so I connected, I, I put, I made this uh, uh, module here uh, with the controls and I put this uh, wire here that is commanding this uh, line of, uh, for resetting. So it's coming from this button. If I'm pressing it, it's turning to zero. And I put these two wires, green wires, unfortunately, both green, uh, to that uh, switch. And now the switch, as you can see, is pushed, is pushed up to count up. And it is indeed counting up, six, seven, eight, uh, and so on. And if I'm turning it down, nine, eight, seven, etc. So, uh, <coughs> uh, it is fucking working. Unfortunately, I have a small issue, a small problem. If I'm putting my hand here, you see, it is uh, uh, going nuts. And on eight, it doesn't display it correctly. Now it is, but you see, <coughs> seven is displaying it correctly for some reason if i'm putting my hands on the table is uh is misbehaving and uh <coughs> and one uh yeah see and one thing that i can think of is that these chips are uh, the the logic chips the counting chips uh how they are called um 4110 these are the for the, the counting and uh, they are um they are all linked. The positive rail is the, the three volts rail that is coming from there. So it's three volts for everything. And this chip that I tested it here, and it didn't give me any kind of errors. It is uh, set to positive there. You can barely see it, but it is there. Positive and here is the negative, those diagonal pins. Uh, I put it, it to five volts there, and it worked absolutely fine. Let me switch it back to up here. Count up. Uh, right now, I'm only uh, driving this uh, number uh, from this chip because all the pins here are connected. And, uh, and the rest are not connected to anything. And pretty much I put it to the fastest possible, is the maximum, I, I have no idea how many hertz is doing here, probably 100 hertz or something, uh, or maybe, one. <coughs> or, or probably one kilohertz. Uh, uh, because here it is actually counting one, two, three, until the fourth digit. <laughs> so uh, as you can see, it's numbering quite uh, rarely, rarely, quite slowly, uh, this last digit, uh, but the speed is extra high. Uh, and I'm very happy that it's working at this point uh, with this uh, setup that I'm having here. Uh, the only problem is my hand, is, is this uh, suscept susceptibility, this uh, very, yeah, I don't like it, this a uh, little bit of error. I believe I will solve it 
uh, somehow. I have no idea yet how to solve it, but yeah, I, I strongly believe it's from these guys because uh, bef when I tested it before, when I had the driver and that board, uh, and I tested it with this chip here, uh, it didn't give me absolutely any kind of errors. But we're, right now in this setup is uh, something. And uh, my belief is if I'm changing the power supply for these chips, probably it will uh, it will drive correctly. Sometimes it's working, sometimes it's, it's very, very buggy. I don't know what uh, which is the, the source of the problem. But yeah, well, I'm very, very happy so far. <laughs> All right, see you later. So uh, what I did so far is that I linked so I managed to make the second digit here, uh, uh, and I linked all, all, of, all of these wires to this chip. And I have two chips, this and this, it's three and four, for the three and four digits. And they are counting correctly, I may add, one, two, three, four, nine, ten, zero. <coughs> but the problem, as you can see, let me actually reset it to start from zero, zero, and when it, it will come to one, you'll see it will display correctly, you see? Now it's very evident, <coughs> but as it has to, to draw more segments, uh, the higher the number of segments, pretty much, is lowering the intensity of the entire screen. Pretty much, the entire screen is uh, in a sort, in sort of a low current. You see, when when it's uh, only one one or one two, working absolutely fine. Uh, the contrast is perfect. But when it's uh, too many segments, it's <coughs> it's highly fluctuating. So uh, these guys are not connected yet for these digits, and uh, right now I am making a test for this wiring that I made here. And it is working absolutely fine uh, from the counting point of view, but it's not fine from the current, probably the current point of view. Uh, the entire circuit current is is something. It is something. I try to put uh, more direct voltage uh, bypassing this uh, voltage uh, regulator. So I put here uh, directly three volts from the power source. Uh, right now it's 3.7 volts. Uh, yeah, five volts, but it's the same thing. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it was a little bit on a lower <laughs> voltage. And now it's on five volts, but you can see it is still fluctuating. Uh, I left it there for three. 0.7 whatever when I when I link it to this directly bypassing the voltage regulator. Uh, so I, I I started with three volts, then I raised it up to around four volts. But it was the same, <coughs> absolutely the same behavior, the same uh, you know uh, fluctuation. In a, I have no idea what is going on or what might be the cause or, or how to help it, how to make it uh, not fluctuate so much. You see, when when it's one one, two uh, two uh, low digit count, low uh, segment count, it is quite a uh, contrast, very good contrast. When it's too many uh, segment counts, is lowering the contrast. A lot like, like this with the, that of 8 and this 9 and the 0. And next one is coming to 1, it will show, you see, very good, excellent contrast. And then it will fuck it, fuck it up. Yeah, shit. Uh, it is, this is a problem. This is a problem. I didn't expect it. And I should have made the entire circuit on the breadboard. What I ha I'm having here, I should have made it on the breadboard and not directly on, on the clean <laughs> cardboard like I'm doing it right now. I hope I will resolve the problem. <coughs> See you later. All right, all right, check this out. It's clear as a whistle. Let's see if I'm putting my hand here. Yes, I'm getting these two digits uh, errors on, on these two digits because the explanation is very simple. It's because uh, uh, it waits to be connected to these chips. And as you can see here, are not connected at all. Uh, if I'm touching, yeah, everywhere. <laughs> if I'm touching every, everywhere, especially my hand on the table, uh, I'm getting error. But the good, very good news is that this guys are not influ uh, influenced anymore. And uh, I, I find the problem, and uh, <laughs> I, I seriously didn't expect it to be such a such a stupid mistake, I may add. And uh, I don't know how to make those disappear. Probably if I'm doing that. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, doesn't matter. Make abstraction of these two. Uh, they are not connected, that that's why they are like that. Uh, if I'm grounding myself, by the way, if I'm making like this and putting my hand here, uh, this is a, a iron table, which it is connected to the ground here through this, this wire. So if I'm putting my, my big finger here, and uh, if I'm doing this, if I'm grounding myself, it is uh, disappearing everything. If I'm not grounding like, like right now, it's appearing back again. So th th this is not a problem. This is not a problem. This will be resolved. What was the actual, the stupid mistake that I did for these numbers, to, for these digits, to, to show up correctly and fully on at a very good contrast like it is right now, uh, it, it, it is happening from time to time. And I am unaware. I am completely unaware of the situation. Sometimes, sometimes in all my experience, uh, so... With, uh, in all my electronic experience, sometimes some pins uh, are completely paralleled with the board. Instead of being flush on the board and actually touching everything, they are springing out a tiny bit like that, uh, like a, I don't know, less than one millimeter. A tiny, tiny bit, they are springing out and they are floating pretty much. And I cannot see them. I could clearly see the pin was not soldered, was not uh, receiving soldering. Uh, so, so, so sometimes, even if they are treated uh, as they are treated, so this was the pin. Exactly this pin that is supposed to be the, the common, this pin motherfucker was floating in air and not connecting. And it was looking like it was completely soldered there. Probably because I did actually uh, resolder this point many times actually. 
so the the idea is that it was clean, absolutely clean, absolutely no kind of solder was on it, or any kind of bridge of solder from from the pad. You see this uh, large metallic pad to the actual pin that is there is very tiny. You can barely see it. Let me actually zoom it. Yeah, right now is you can see the solder uh, that is bridging there now, but it was. More clear than this, it was not holding any solder on it at all. And I clearly put solder on it many times, but it, uh, it was clean like, like it was clean like my uh, knife that I'm having here. I was uh, being able to see the metal of the pin. That that clean it was. And uh, usually in this situation, so, so these are uh, random events, random uh, you know uh, errors that uh, I get personally. I get and usually I'm using my uh, my flux, uh, which is in form of a resin, very hard resin that I'm having here. And if I'm fluxing that specific dry, extra mega dry pin, then this flux is is uh, homo homogeneously and a fluid, uh, fluidizing uh, the, the solder to the actual body of the pin. And that's uh, th this is exactly what it, uh, it happened. For some reason, it was working with only one digit, probably when um, when I had it, uh, it was a better connection when I had only one digit connected, and then it springed out and it was parallel. And when I when I made the second, but, but uh, I didn't touch that pin when I, so I soldered every uh, link for this chip here, for the first, for the last digit that I have there. I made the test and I never touched that area. So it worked like that. And then next step, I, did, I didn't have to do anything there. Next, I, I put these wires here and, and I connected this chip for the second and then I get the error. And uh, this uh, leg either springed out as long as I was turning around the, the entire device to, to actually solder those links. Uh, so while I was working on this side, it springed out from there. Or it was already springed out from the very beginning from when I uh, linked this chip, the first one. And uh, I don't know, I, but it worked with only one chip. It worked fine. Uh, I'm very, very now. I'm very happy that I find the fucking problem. The fucking bastard. It, it, it was springing. Up. And I will add a little bit more solder to make a bigger blob there to be, to be absolutely sure this will not spring out ever. <laughs> to be surrounded pretty much like, like this. To be surrounded uh, into a very big blob of uh, <laughs> of solder. Uh, not to have this problem again. I did this. I did had similar problems in other circuits that I made. Exactly the same thing I had. Uh, the, the same uh, problem I had when the pin was springing out and it was floating uh, less than one millimeter over the, the pad that it should be soldered. Uh, I kind of got similar results, but not on display. I had uh, other results. Random and weird erroneous, erroneous behavior in, in the entire circuit. Those were uh, more nasty to debug and to find out where is the problem. I'm super, <laughs> I'm super happy that I find the problem. Oh, 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 oh. oh uh, another point is that I um, I reached to my friends from England, uh, to Mr. Marconi uh, from one website and uh, another guy from uh, another website. Uh, but we are talking in particular uh, in private on private uh, chats, and uh, I want to thank them both for their quick response, extremely quick, quick response. When I asked the question in a couple of minutes, they uh, they actually responded, and uh, we spent like uh, one or two days, one one day and a half, something like that. And uh, they helped me indirectly. Uh, they helped me directly. First of all, they helped me directly to make some tests along the way. Uh, but <laughs> no one could uh, find anything uh, even remotely close to the problem. But that uh, help, that attitude, uh, was indirectly uh, helping me. To get the right attitude myself and to start the de debug a little bit more seriously and uh, is, is exactly what i did after one day and a half i, I did try yesterday all day i tried numerous uh uh, I tried with, uh, with the transistor here. Uh, I, I took the signal from this uh, chip and I, I link it to that transistor. Uh, actually, two versions. This is the second version of the transistor. Uh, a bit more secure is this. And it's probably better. Uh, it's from uh, my guy uh, uh, idea. And then I, I had to check the, the amperage that is flowing through all the circuit. It was uh, four uh, milliamps through the entire circuit. Uh, I'm curious how it is right now. But uh, as you can see, my device, my ampere meter that I already have on my power supply is zero, zero, zero. So it's less than 10 milliamps right now. If that was one, it was 10 milliamps. So it's less than 10 milliamps, probably also four or five milliamps per entire circuit, which is absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> it's very good. It's absolutely it's fantastic good, especially for battery. And I'm I'm very, very sure this will actually work a long time with the battery, uh, with three volts battery, something like that. Or maybe four, uh, four volts, 4.5 volts, you know, like three batteries. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, but <laughs> because I also have that regulator there. Um, so yeah, uh, and I have to thank uh, my friend, my two friends that I have, uh, both they are UK from uh, England, and uh, they, they are absolutely... Um, uh, they, they were very quick to help, and uh, it, it did, they did help me. Uh, if not directly to actually find the cause, indirectly to to put me on the right direction, you know, <laughs> to actually be a bit more serious about uh, to, to start to, to to find, you know, to, to search myself a little bit more seriously. So yeah, I thank them both. Uh, they had great great ideas actually, and uh, I, I couldn't think uh, on uh, from their perspective. That's why it's good to have a little bit of friends. Uh, they came with uh, they are coming with uh, different ideas that you literally you, you don't really put all the attention on. You, you, it's impossible for me to put all the attention to every aspect of everything. It's impossible. When, when you see another idea from outside, you try it. Uh, even if it's a very simple idea, you try it anyway because uh, you cannot think on everything, you know, uh, especially when you are concentrated on the big uh, thing that you have to run it here and to be uh, very specific on some parts. Uh, it's, it's, this is an extremely simple idea. It's extremely simple circuit when you look on the diagram, but is extremely, extremely deviously hard when you have to be actually build it, uh, especially when because I made some mistakes for the driver itself uh, in the very beginning when I, when I started everything. And I had a ton, <laughs> a ton of bad luck making all this device, a ton of bad luck. I, I had a ton of errors. I, I didn't expect those errors to happening to happen. 
uh, formidable, formidable bad luck. But I, I push it as hard as I could, and I'm very, extremely glad right now that it is uh, is giving some fruits. <laughs> After all my my pushing, you know, and all my patience, I, I had a, a ton of patience uh, for this circuit. A ton. You, you have no idea how, how patient I, I was, especially with the errors and to to, to find them. <laughs> it's looking like it's degree there. there. You see, like a circle, degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. I'm very happy that I resolved this problem, and uh, yeah, uh, it is working. Everything is working fine. And uh, see you later. See you later uh, when I will actually link the last two guys there, and uh, everything will work as it should be. Uh, not this speedy, probably, uh, probably less speedy to actually see those first two. All right. See you later. See you later. I'm very happy. This is good news what I have right now. Bah. All right. Finally, I finally linked all the wires here for this digit, which is that uh, digit two, and I finally linked all the wires for this chip, which is driving this module. But <laughs> as you can clearly see, the top uh, segment, which is A here uh, or there. Uh, it's not working <laughs> and it's not the wire i check it it is making a connection with my uh, uh continuity meter uh, is absolutely not the wire i did use my very long tweezer and i made a contact between you know, so i'm making contact here and there and nothing absolutely nothing happens it is contacting and nothing happens i did it uh, without my phone in my hands uh, and i was very sure it is contacting and uh, i actually uh, put a direct wire to be certain uh, although I, I did measure it with my uh, multimeter on the continuity and it was a short meaning that the wire was connected to that point and uh, so it's not the wiring it's not the wiring that is causing that little shit <laughs> that little shit <laughs> uh it's something else i have no idea at the moment which one it might be this or it might be this driver i am very very lucky it's here the a and i can uh, easily can uh, kind of easily can take out this and uh, replace it with another if if this is the the bastard uh, or if it is this guy here i don't know uh, but that will be solved solved very soon and uh, you know what Wait a second. Uh, actually, I, I did check these connections, but I didn't check the, the output from this gate to that. Let me check it first and see if if it's uh, if it is an output uh, link somewhere there. And bingo, bingo! I find the problem. It was the exact same problem as I had it on this other side. That pin. Uh, if we are looking here, you see A is twenty one, and is this A red? You see th that pin is the last pin, uh, and there is the common, which is the last other pin. So this is the common, and this is actually the A. And you see, if I if I touch it. You see, it's, the pin is springed out from the contact very a tiny little bit, like under one millimeter. And look what it's doing. Motherfucker. So if I'm pressing it a little bit, it is making contact with that last pin on the... I'm so happy it's not the chips <laughs> that I have to check. So yeah, it was a great idea from my side, from my part right now. Uh, so I am repairing it right now. Uh, you see, you, you cannot see it, see that it is springed out. Or maybe, maybe you can <laughs> uh, for this one. But if I'm putting a blob here, a bigger blob of soldering like that. And this will remedy the problem, bastard. Yeah, uh, the pins are a little bit, uh, uh, they are not wet, easy, easily wet. They are very dry. They are not catching the solder very well. Um, probably from this, uh, you see, uh, this uh, support that I'm having here, its pins are very old and probably not that well made, but problem fucking solved. So <laughs> with this last error and problem that I had, I, at this point, at this point in time, as you can see, let me reset it to back to zero. At this point in time, uh, I finish it. I finish the fucking, project <laughs> i all i only have to add a few add-ons like the one second um, um switch to one second and i will use another gate from that chip uh, to perfectly beat on one second uh, also i can i can do it from uh, from this potential meter right right here uh, i was actually uh thinking on on finding a, a way of uh, you see it's kind of very very yeah it's not that slow i might change the capacitor a little bit to give that uh, one second exactly one second bit uh, or pulse directly from from this and, and make a mark somewhere and <laughs> but uh, i really like the the fast speed if i'm uh, turning it to the maximum right now and it is uh, beating quite fast this last uh, um, digit quite well, relatively fast but uh, yeah fucking hell <laughs> it's it's working it's working and now to to actually let me slow it down for you to see on like that and if i'm switching to down so it's four five six and now i'm switching it to down next will be four three two so now it's counting down if i'm resetting it is switching to 999 and counting down and if i'm switching to count up it is counting up seven eight nine zero zero excellent and if i'm switching this guy here nothing works anymore because now he's expecting uh an outside external pulse you see so i i have the option to put an external clock from whatever i want uh that that was in the, the original uh, design when i when i originally designed it i wanted to add this functionality as well and it is working everything that i'm having here it is working quite nice quite nice uh and uh, another mistake that i made in the very beginning uh when, when i when i started here i did use a 555 clocky this 555 clock that i this <laughs> uh this 555 clock instead of this clock made with a 7414 which is a schmidt trigger uh the, the, all the, the, the oscillations are made because this is containing a Schmidt trigger and that Schmidt, Schmidt trigger is uh, creating the oscillations. Uh, so let me switch it back to uh, auto, 
auto clock, which is this guy here, the Schmidt trigger uh, not gate uh, that I'm having there. So this is another mistake that I didn't tested it at all here. Probably I tested one single gate from it, and that's it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember I did test it w one single time. And when I see that it, it was working, ah, it's good enough. I, I can link everything to it like I'm, I did it already here. So I, I should have made all this circuit already on the breadboard. But I said, nah, I'm smart. I'm smarter than, than you. And uh, it didn't give me that many uh, headaches. Uh, but when I had that problem with the numbers here, my friends were pointing, uh, one of my friends, my good friend from uh, UK, uh, from Britain, uh, was uh, linking the, the problem to the clock, this clock that, and all the pins, and he is right. Uh, all the inputs are are floating. And um, I, I did learn my lesson uh, with floating pins on, on logic chips. Uh, but at, in this uh, configuration, uh, <coughs> at this point in time that I'm having it right now, working perfectly, it's good enough. It's, it's, it's fine as it is. I, I am extremely enthusiastic, uh, ecstatic right now, because everything is working as it should be, and it shouldn't have been so hard. But it was deviously hard, deviously hard to build it, the building of it. All the wiring, all the logic, fucking hell. Uh, like I said, next I will have to add an add-on, uh, another uh, clock there, a link to this chip, and then another uh, module here with the buzzer, uh, a beeper that will beep uh, from ten, from tens, from uh, hundreds, uh, thousands, and tens of thousands. And it will have a switch, uh, uh, a jumper that I will jump it to select from which it will beep. And I will have... So <coughs> This is only half of the problem resolved here. I'll have to add some diodes that will stand up on each leg and link together. And it's an entire uh, uh, hardware logic that I will have to build on top of this chip uh, pins. Uh, not only this, on, on all of them, all these four. And uh, that will give me that uh, listening um, option uh, or, or logic. Uh, and uh, it will know when to beep. When, it, when this will reach zero, everything will create that logic and it will be read, uh, read somewhere. And uh, yeah, yeah, you've seen the 3D model probably uh, by now and you know what's uh, what's going on. So yeah, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy right now. It is working, absolutely fantastic. And with a ton, a ton of uh, problems and bad luck, a ton of bad luck. And um, it shouldn't have been this hard, but well, <laughs> I'm in Romania. <laughs> everything is hard here. It's extra hard, it's mega extra hard. So yeah, all right. Thank you very much. Uh, I, see, uh, uh, I want to believe you are as happy as I am. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. See you later.